Hello, I'm Zardis, and let's play Planet Zoo. Welcome back to Zarzu. This will be episode 22, I believe. And we are doing a little bit of a different format today. So one thing I wanted to do is um, I wanted to change up my schedule a little bit so that I could fit in another game on this channel. And so we started uh, Transport Fever 2 again. And I also wanted to uh, switch this one up to be a little bit more time lapse just because I feel like there's a lot of downtime in this one anyway and having it be all time lapse will allow me to squeeze in the build uh, just when I have little bits of time and in fact I actually did this first part of the build uh, while the little czar was with me on my lap so that is a fun little thing about this part of the build now what we are doing here and let me bring up my spreadsheet so I can look at what part of this we're doing. Uh, we're doing the Western Lowland Gorilla exhibit here right now. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to get a spot in there and then you saw me put this path in here. I was really happy that I fit it back in there. Uh, I feel like it really gets tucked away pretty well and hidden from the guests. And so now I'm adding that into there. We're gonna go and buy our uh, gorillas now. So we're going to get one male and a few females. I don't remember how many we end up with, but then we'll get them on their way. And then we're going to work on changing this area up a little bit or like adding what we need for it. And I think there's a lot of stuff in here uh, that Actually, I think that might have been from the workshop, but I don't remember. So if if that was somebody's build, I apologize that I forgot to do that. Now here, I wanted to put their bed area or their shelter kind of so that they can get away for the most part. But I still um, I wanted the guests to be able to see it. And you can see now I'm adding climbing stuff and we're just pretty much using the stuff right in the game and I guess I didn't end up placing that asset that I thought might have been from the workshop but anyway I I want it to be fast and I didn't want to like do all this much detailing and so I just wanted to use I mean there's a lot of great stuff in the game itself and you can really get by without using anything from the workshop if you want to and I think we've done that a lot on this series actually where we haven't had very many things from the workshop on here and i mean most of the time we're just doing what we can with what is in the game now i really like how the train uh goes through this area here and this is uh today pretty much we are working on primates in general so we're starting with gorillas and then we're going to do mandrills and then lemurs over in here and i don't know if lemurs count as primates but i think we're going to count them today at least because i'm titling the episode the uh, african primates episode but uh here you can see i'm just adding a little bit of foliage now we got the terrain the way we needed it and we'll get some foliage in there and then that will be it for the gorillas. So, I mean, that, I think we're getting close to being done with their part here. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. They're happy. Okay, now we're moving on. We're going to put mandrills here and uh, uh, Aldabra giant tortoises. They can go together and they're going to work just fine in here. I'm trying to get the uh, fence in between and underneath there. But we're kind of doing the same idea where we have the um, that one walkway and platform up there so that the guests can see a little bit. But then we also have at, at the very front of the habitat, we have a little bit more of a viewing area. So here I'm just making sure it's climb proof. And then we are going to make the windows there in the front. And over here, I oh, I made that part climb proof on both sides because we're going to need that there. But then uh, we've got the door back there, got it in there. And then we're going to uh, make sure that we get some of these, one male, a bunch of females. And uh, so we get that going. 
get them sent on their way. And then we're going to check on the tortoises. And they need, I, I think that said one male as well. So we'll go ahead and get them on their way. I'm going to have some coke here. And now I'm using pretty much the same hard shelter for all of these habitats. And there I had an issue in the park I needed to check on. Mandrill, uh, one of them didn't end up getting delivered. So we ended up, oh, I took that out. So we're gonna put it back. Then we are going to get their basic needs met here with a, a food spot and a water spot. And then we will get a whole bunch of climbing stuff in place because that makes it fun. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that the climbing things were in a position where they they would kind of be climbing up and then ideally like making faces at the guests. You can see me kind of going over there and looking a little bit at the guest view to see where they seem to be and need to lower that a little bit. And then here I wanted to customize it a tiny bit. So we added just that little bit here and a couple of platforms added together. Try to make it seem like one giant uh, climbing apparatus. So then here I'm just kind of tweaking that a little bit having a board from one to the other. And I think, and we're gonna get the same thing over here. I think it works out pretty well. So we have that little bit of a climbing thing there. And they can go from like all over there. Then we're gonna get the train in here set for them. Of course, they are jungle animals, so they don't really like the desert terrain that I had in place to begin with. But that should work fine. Now I'm coming in and adding a few of the enrichment items for them to make them a bit happier. We'll get a few up on the climbing devices just to try and encourage them to climb a little bit more up there. And then I'm trying to put a sprinkler in on the ground. There we go. And then we'll go in and, oh, I had an issue here. This cheetah or the, this jaguar, every time it goes by that fence, the game tells me that it has escaped. And of course, an escaped animal is a pretty big deal, so I have to check that to make sure whenever I get that alert, but um, it really is just that one baby jaguar getting too close to the fence, and I don't know if the game thinks that he can go through the fence or what, but whatever, it works. So now we are in here. We did have a little bit of an issue with this habitat because the tortoises want a little bit more sand than the uh, mandrills and so it doesn't quite balance out perfectly but it it was fine i was just getting a few trees in here and they really like those really tall ones but we'll get some of that in there and that'll be it for this habitat i feel like a lot of these smaller ones are coming together very quickly which makes me think that i mean we're almost done with Africa, and then we're moving on to Asia, and I think it's possible that'll go pretty quick. All right, now we are moving on to, oh, no, we're working on, yeah, we're moving on here to the lemur habitat. And so I'm getting the pathway in here that will be another lookout point. But this one, I want to have it go join the other Areas. So we're going to take out the trees here so that we can see. And then from here, we're going to go across here. And then we're going to cut through what will be the pygmy hippo habitat. So then, and then I realized I could make that into a little ramp instead. So that worked. Now we're going to come in here and find the lemurs. Find out what we need for their barrier and get that built. So they don't need a super big barrier, unlike the other primates, which the gorillas in particular needed like a 16 foot barrier that was climb proof, which made sense. I mean, they're big animals and they can climb, but um, the lemurs, by contrast, don't really need that. So we'll get that in place here. 
we are going to, it has to be climb proof, but it doesn't have to be too tall. And then we'll get windows over on that side. We'll get a pathway over in there. And then we are going to add the lemurs. We can have a lot of lemurs in a habitat, and so that's why I am grabbing a whole bunch. I mean, did not see how many we added, but it was a lot. And so now we are coming in here, and I'm going to get the basics in place for the lemurs. And their shelter, I wanted to make sure that it was put so that they can get away from the people if they really want to. And so that's why I put it over there. And now we're going to get some more of these climbing uh, frames in place here. I did not combine them, or maybe I did. Yeah, it looks like I'm combining them here. So we're just going to have the same idea where we have a, something that they can walk across to get from one to the other. And then we'll get a few more little uh, climbing shelter thingies over here. Climbing shelter thingies. That's what I'm calling them now. I think that should be a patented phrase. But uh, yeah, anyway, we're getting a few more in there just so they can have plenty of climbing. We'll get a few enrichment items on there. And then hopefully they'll arrive soon. And then we will be able to get the train in this location as well. But in the meantime, I decided I would start to add a little bit of foliage tucked away in here just to kind of fill that in. And then I saw, oh, here one comes. So I took a break from the foliage and also noticed that there's a ton of people there. By the way, we get up to like 12,000, uh, like almost 13,000 guests on this video. I'm very intrigued to see how high we can get the, uh, the guest population up. And it'll be very interesting to see how the how my computer holds up with that. But I mean, it, it is a very powerful machine. And so like so far, the worst frame rate I've seen is at like 11 on this game, which granted is a pretty low frame rate. But when you're used to playing City Skylines that has a, like sometimes if you do a really detailed thing, you can get it down to like five or six, then it can be pretty good to see uh, like this one at 11. So now we're getting the foliage in here. Just trying to get some hiding spots for them and just kind of make the whole thing look kind of cool as well. Nothing super fancy. Um, I think you probably know by now that my style isn't super fancy. My style is really to have like a big functioning thing and to fill the map. I love filling maps. Now over here, I decided we should get a little bit more uh, facilities in place. So we're gonna come in here and really, I wanted to get more power in so that we could get more education, which that was the starting point. We got that there and then we had came just far enough that I could come in here and get these educational boards in place. Of course, they are gigantic for this area, but they work and so we're I'm, I'm happy with them. I want a little bit of guest education in the park. I think it is important, and, but man, there's so many people. So that habitat has one board for each animal type. Now we're coming over here and we're going to, I just wanted to check to make sure they couldn't escape there. And we'll get a couple boards in for this habitat too. And again, there's that jaguar over by the fence. Okay, then I wanted to add a few more benches in here for people to sit on. And that is that. Now, one thing I wonder, I had never noticed this until this park, but 
all of my guests seem to be running around, which I think is kind of strange. They're not really walking, they're just, they're running. And I don't really have, I mean, the game is on a slow pace, but you can see them running everywhere. So I'm not sure what that's about, but now I decided to come in here and we are going to do a bit of detailing of this creek here. Figured as long as I'm doing a time lapse, I might as well start adding a little bit more detail in the foliage and getting it to look nice. I thought that the stream would probably be aligned with reeds just to kind of block it off. And I also figured there where the bridge is, maybe it's a little bit of a shallower spot and could get a few reeds in there. I wonder, I want I could probably put some water lilies in here and that would be pretty too. But I figured I'd stop there because I'm not sure where the uh, pygmy habitat will end. And I thought, well, you know what, this area is pretty bare too, so we're kind of done adding things in here at this point, so we might as well come in and get a little bit more foliage to fill it out. I like hiding the ground with the trees, but then I also am coming in here and just getting that terrain to have a little bit more of the color that I want. Is because I feel like that makes it a little bit more realistic where they have a little bit of grass in there and then it, it has a good feel to it. So now I'm just looking for more foliage to put in. I feel like we could have a lot more foliage in the safari at some point so I might go back and add some more in there. I'm not sure how much the grassland animals will like. Now here I wanted to get another keeper hut and a staff room in this little space here. I mean, we have the space available, so we might as well utilize it. Especially because we are playing on sandbox mode, so it doesn't matter how much money we're putting into maintaining our park. Uh, it is good to have all of that there. And we'll just get another little bit of foliage here to hide that ground. And it's also about making sure that the guests on the train have a nice view there. And we have a little bit more in here that could just use a little bit of foliage. And kind of to block the... Again, we have guests on the safari ride there. And I want to hide kind of the backstage area a little bit there. Clean that terrain up a little bit as well. Then over in here I figured, you know, we're close to the edge of the Africa part. We'll just put some standard North American uh, trees in there. And I think that is it. So thanks for watching and I will catch you next time. Take care.